In this video, we're going to go over some awesome features and tips to help you fix, improve, and learn more about your computer. Ranging from tips to help you boost your FPS and prevent games from crashing, to showing you some pretty cool secrets, we're going to blast through 15 of them in total. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. For this first tip, we're going to show you how to get some really useful features for your Windows computer, especially if you still use Windows 10. And that's by using something called Microsoft Power Toys. Now you can get this on GitHub or through the Microsoft Store, and it's free by the way. This program is basically a one-stop shop for tons of new useful features. For example, Fancy Zones allows you to create a custom window layout on any monitor. Always on top lets you pin any window above any other application, and text extractor lets you copy and paste text from literally anything on your screen and that includes images. There are a lot more awesome features that this program brings and there's honestly not much of a reason to not have it. And if you're wondering, Windows 11 did incorporate quite a few of these features but not all of them. This next tip should help you guys gain some pretty solid FPS in a few of these officially supported games which I'll show a list for. If you have an NVIDIA RTX 30 or 40 series graphics card, we're going to enable something called Resizable Bar. What Resizable Bar essentially does is it allows for the entirety of your GPU's graphics frame buffer to be accessible all in one shot. You can see if you already have it enabled by right-clicking your desktop and opening NVIDIA Control Panel. On the bottom left, click on System Information and look for Resizable Bar. If it says no, I'm going to show you how to turn it on. First off, you need to make sure your motherboard's BIOS is updated as well as your graphics card's game-ready drivers. I've attached a couple videos to the description of this video to help you guys out with that if you don't know how. Once that's done, restart your computer and go into your BIOS. For reference, I'm using an ASUS motherboard so my BIOS may look a little different than yours. Enter Advanced Mode, click on the Advanced tab and locate PCI Subsystem Settings. If you enable 4G decoding, then another option option called Resize Bar Support will appear. Turn that to Auto, then save your changes and restart your PC. This should increase your FPS in those aforementioned games. Shout out to DePoets for this tip, his profile is linked in the description, so go show him some support if you can. Tip number three is for those of you who use Steam. I'm going to show you how to get some games that were delisted from the Steam store. If you hold the Windows key and press R on your keyboard, your computer's run box will pop up. Input this URI scheme into the box, steam colon slash slash install slash 92. Pressing enter will automatically open a prompt to download code named Gordon, which some of you may remember from years ago. This also works works with games like FNAF World and 8-Bit Bayonetta by just changing the last string of numbers, which is also known as the game's app ID. Here are a list of all the games that I know this scheme works with, and if you want to know more about this, I strongly recommend you check out this video right here, which will be linked in the description. For this tip, we're going back to Steam because I want to show you how to fix some games, especially the Call of Duty series. If when you load up a game, there's audio but a black screen, all you need to do is go to your control panel, click on hardware and sound, click on sound, then right click and disable any devices you're not using in both the playback and recording tabs. When you're done, your game should load up now. now let's show you how to use a secret called God Mode on your computer. If you right-click your desktop and create a new folder, name it this long string. I'll paste it in the description below. You'll notice that the folder will immediately become a new shortcut, which when opened will provide you with an organized list of all of Windows control panel settings, making it easy for you to access what you need very quickly. This folder you just created, dubbed God Mode by the community, is in actuality just a junction point, which is like a folder shortcut. And that long string of letters and numbers that you put as the name is just what's called a CLS ID. Your computer has tons of these. Moving on to number six, if you're ever scared or suspicious about a specific file or URL on your computer, go to virustotal.com and paste it in the proper tab. This website will run your file or URL through a bunch of different antivirus programs and tell you if any of them detected anything malicious or out of the ordinary. Now, not every antivirus is perfect. There could be some false positives and more rarely some false negatives. However, the biggest ones to look for are from Kaspersky, Malwarebytes, and Bitdefender. If one of those is set off and tells you of a potential threat, then I say stay away from that file or URL. However, if none of these are set off, then I recommend seeing if any other antivirus programs detected anything suspicious. If four or more are set off, then I generally stay away from the file or URL. It's a pretty useful site to keep in mind for the future. If you are a PC gamer like myself, then gg.deals will be your best friend. This website keeps track of PC games and their prices across multiple platforms, which will allow you to get the best prices on whatever game you want. It will highlight historically low prices as well as keep track of games across key shop websites like Kingwin. So if you ever want to spend the least amount of money possible on a game or DLC, this website's for you. Sticking on the topic of useful websites, we have steamgrid.db. Now what this website does is it provides you with custom artwork for your Steam library games. It's especially useful if you have games with outdated library images like this one. All you have to do is search for the game you want artwork for. When you find something you like, click the download icon, then right click and save the image wherever you want. Now on Steam, go to the library icon for that game, right click it and select set custom artwork. Then just select the photo you downloaded and that's it. Moving on to number nine, if you just purchased a pre-built or you just built your first computer, chances are you have to enable your memory overclocking profile to set your RAM speeds to what they're actually rated for. By default, they're set to 2133 megahertz 
megahertz and you more than likely don't actually have speeds that low. That's assuming if you have a fairly modern computer and not one from like the early 2000s. So let's restart our computer and head into the BIOS. It should load right into what's called easy mode, but if not, select it in the bottom right corner of your BIOS menu. Now, depending on your CPU, you should see something called XMP, DOCP, or EXPO. All you have to do is select the drop down menu and click on profile one. Then save your changes and restart your PC. Your RAM should now be running at the frequency it's rated for, and you can check that by opening the task manager, selecting the performance tab, then clicking on memory. The value you're looking for is next to speed. Some people may be familiar with the developer console for Valve games like Left 4 Dead 2, but you may not know that Steam itself has a console as well. In order to activate it, right click on your Steam shortcut, then at the end of the shortcut pathway, add a space, then type dash console and hit apply. Now when you load up Steam, there will be a new tab option at the top of the window. There's quite a lot of interesting things you can do with this, so I've linked a Steam community guide in the description below that tells you pretty much everything about it and what you can do with it. Definitely something cool for people who like to tinker with stuff. If you're unfamiliar with Windows hotkeys, here's a couple that you might find useful. Windows key plus M will minimize every window on your screen. Windows key plus shift plus S will allow you to screenshot a specific portion of anything on any of your monitors. Windows key plus period will bring up emojis for you to use when typing. And Windows key plus control plus D will create a new desktop if you're trying to hide something or just separate your work environments. You can then click on the task view button next to your search bar and select any desktop you've created, as well as delete the ones you're not using. Sometimes Steam games refuse to work properly. For example, Bully Scholarship Edition and the first couple Dead Island games, which crash constantly. To fix this and any games that behave the same way, install them on the same drive that you have your operating system installed on. For whatever reason, some games absolutely hate being installed on secondary drives. If you're someone who cares about the look of your desktop and the icons with it, then consider heading to the Microsoft Store and downloading a free app called Pashan. This will give you instant access to custom icon images for programs on your computer, so you can save whichever one you like as an ICO file, right-click the shortcut for the program you want to change, and open its properties. Then in the shortcut tab, select Change Icon, select the image you just saved, then apply the change. Then if you want to do what I did, you can pin the shortcut to your taskbar and create a much more uniform color icon scheme. Another thing you could download while you're on the Microsoft Store is a thing called Modern Flyouts. That one's also free. What this will do is turn the volume window on the top left of your screen into something far more attractive. I personally love Modern Flyouts, and I honestly think it really adds to the aesthetics of my computer. The 15th and final tip is going to be in regards to conflicting programs. If you happen to notice an issue when loading up a game or program on your computer, there's a chance that you might have some software on your computer that's preventing an application from working properly. NZXT Cam, Razer Synapse, and IOBit Antivirus are notorious for causing issues on your computer, either highlighting them and ending the task within Task Manager, or simply just uninstalling them from your computer if you want to do that should help resolve the issue. I recommend doing the former first. And those were all 15 Windows tips, tricks, and secrets all packaged up nicely in a little video for you. If you have any other things you want to add to this video, just drop them in the comments below. There's a ton of other extra things I could have covered here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing if you want to see more content that's similar to this. And with all that being said, thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Take care. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> Wait, you're alive? What? Yeah. Oh. <laughs>